This is the story of the NCKCC trip on February 22, 2020 to the Sacramento Auto Museum to see their display on real cars and how they relied on cars to tell the story of the movie. The NCKCC Group 2 started with Jim Wagner and a friend from Foster City who came to Vern Hance's home in Walnut Creek then Vern drove his car to pick up John Kniebel at his home in Fairfield, California. Since John, at age 98, uses an electric scooter to get around, Vern drove John's van, which is equipped to accommodate the scooter. Next, our group two stopped at the Black Bear restaurant in Vacaville for brunch, then off to the Auto Museum in Sacramento, arriving there about 12.30 p.m. We met up with our group one, Steve and Rosie Rhodes, who had come up earlier and had furnished their tour of the museum displays when we had arrived. We had a short visit with them and tried to comfort Steve, who was recovering from an earlier skiing accident, noticed the right arm in a sling. In the museum, we adopted Ed Combs, a very knowledgeable docent who sparred with John Kniebel over auto and aviation history milestones over the years. We received a completed tour of the museum and ran short on time for the real cars display that we came to see. The info and pictures during our docent tour could make another video report later. About 1 p.m., Group 3 arrived from the Brentwood area and included Dave and Joyce Decato, Al Bello with a guest, and Gil Summerhalder. Group 3 did their tour of the museum, guided by the display placards at each vehicle, then concentrated on the real car display. At the start of the 20th century, movies and automobiles were both new technologies. Cars could be used as symbols of elegance, like the carriages that preceded them. At the same time, the reliability of cars was iffy. Naive drivers often generated silly situations that did provide entertainment. In the early days, the fledgling movie industry grew, just as cars grew in popularity and availability. As car enthusiasts and successful race drivers mingled with filmmakers, cars and even airplanes were used for action movies using the themes of beat the train or beat the clock. This led to more movies involving chases, crashes, and out of control action. This 1951 Nash Rambler was owned by 20th Century Fox and was used to promote a 1952 film called Monkey Business with Marilyn Monroe. The Nash Rambler was also used for the 1952 Miss America pageant featuring Marilyn Monroe as Grand Marshal in the parade. This movie entitled The First was created by Hulu in 2018 and was a television show using a modified Range Rover to make it look like a future car of 2033. This Pargo golf cart was used in a Disney movie entitled Saving Mr. Banks, set in the year 1961. In this case, a golf cart was modified to look like one in the 1960s. When the first Fast and Furious movie came out in 2001, no one expected it to launch one of the biggest franchises in movie history. Nine Furious named movies have been completed and a tenth one is due out in 2021. This 2016 Subaru BRZ from The Fate of the Furious included elements of street racing and crime fighting. This 1927 Studebaker police truck was owned by a company that rented vehicles to film studios. In it, they included cars from Ford Model T's to a Duesenberg. This particular police truck appeared in over 200 movies. Ford vs. Ferrari has been a popular current film. This Superformance replica was considered expendable enough to be used in the major parts of the film 
Even though the early race footage shown in the film is from an actual 1963 race where the real Ken Miles was racing a pedigreed Cobra. This 1953 Nash Healy was purchased new by William Holden and was used in several scenes of the movie Sabrina. Later the car underwent some mild customization work but was restored back to the original by its current owners who purchased it in 1977. Reportedly, only 33 Ferrari 250 Testarossa vehicles were produced between 1957 and 1961. This one is a replica, but has an authentic Ferrari V12 under the hood. It was used in The Art of Racing in the Rain which is a story about a race driver with a race-loving dog named Enzo Ferrari. This 1928 Pierce Aero Truck was used in the 1930s and 40s and features many ways in which cameras can be mounted in a camera car for filming action scenes that can range from horse-drawn chariots to race cars. Sometimes it's necessary to destroy a car as part of the movie script. This 1972 Buick Skylark started out in good running condition and was used for many scenes in the movie Animal Kingdom. Later it was destroyed in a sequence entitled Man vs. Rock. Taxicabs are frequently featured on screen. Many American taxicabs were made by Checker Motors, but Chrysler Corporation was also a large supplier. This 1965 Dodge Coronet was used in a movie called Mad Men and More, and was very common in the New York area in the 1960s. The Henney Company started to make funeral cars in 1916. This 1918 model was used in a 1955 movie called Bad Day at Black Rock, starring Spencer Tracy. The craftsmanship in the carvings to create the wood curtains in the side of the vehicle is impressive. This is a 2000 BMW 323CI that was used in a TV show entitled Lethal Weapon. It is attached to a very modified 1986 Ford Econoline 350, which has a rear-facing seat for a strapped-in camera operator. The roof and rear platform are textured to prevent the operators from slipping. This 1967 Type 2 VW bus was the perfect car for fast times at Ridgemont High. This was the story of Jeff Spicoli, a perpetually stoned surfer dude. The original owner of the VW used it as a daily driver until he was approached by Universal Studios in 1981 about using it in a movie. Wayne Winger and his grandson, who drove from Placerville in his 1952 Munz Jets, was the day's highlight. The people shown, including most of Group 2 and Group 4, plus our docent Ed Combs. Seeing this lavender-colored Munts jet created and sold in the 1950s by Madman Munts was a delight. Unfortunately, Group 1 and Group 3 had departed and missed out on this feature. We hope this video will partially offset that missed opportunity.